both Flushing and in Manhattan. So here in Manhattan, um, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit called the International Debate Education Association. And in Flushing, um, I've been fortunate enough to be one of the founders and directors of Immigrant Advancement Matters, also known as I Am. Ah, Flushing. <laughs> so, first of all, I did not choose to move to Flushing. So, my family and I immigrated from Dominican Republic when I was seven years old, and we came to Flushing in 1991, and my parents, uh, they were professionals in Dominican Republic, and they really had a sense of New York City, and if you guys know anything about the history, you know that Dominicans tend to um, go to either the Bronx or Washington Heights, and at the time, in the 90s, Washington Heights especially, there was a lot of crime, and my parents were trying to find a safe uh, area that we could grow up, they can raise their family. And so they decided to move to Flushing. And I've been in Flushing since I was seven. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but I've been in Flushing for over 20 years. Um, and it's been a really interesting experience. Flushing has really um, transformed the t during the time that I've been there. <laughs> I think what makes Flushing unique, and a lot of people don't realize this. I say people that don't live in Flushing, they don't realize this. I think that Flushing, you would think that it's a predominantly Asian community. And even though that's the majority, I think what makes Flushing so unique is that you could be walking along Main Street and downtown Flushing, you'll see a lot of different businesses, uh, Asian businesses. But you walk a little further and all of a sudden you see um, different ethnicities. You see an Indian restaurant, you see a Latino restaurant, and you could pretty much turn the corner anywhere and find yourself um, interacting with or going into the business of someone from a different part of the world. And that's really, really what I love about Flushing. Um, how people live together. In my building, I would say that most of the people in my building are from China. And it helps break down a lot of stereotypes, I think. Um, sometimes when you don't know people, you make certain assumptions, but my neighbors are neighbors regardless of their ethnicity, and they are kind, um, and we have a wonderful relationship. So I think also the friendships that you build in a diverse community like Flushing is really special and unique. When I was younger, my parents, uh, my parents have always been devout Catholics. And when I was in Dominican Republic, they were very adamant about making sure that we went to a Catholic institution. And when we came here, even though my parents were um, poor, they sacrificed themselves and you know they decided to forego a lot of wonderful things like owning a home to make sure that we had uh, a Catholic education. So in Flushing, the only school I've really attended has been St. Michael's School, which was right on 41st Avenue. And, um, and it was wonderful, it was a really wonderful school. After elementary school, um, I went to a school in Fresh Meadows, which is St. Francis Prep. So in terms of my experience with educational institutions in Flushing, it's really been Catholic, private, and after that, you know, I've gone to different places outside of Flushing. But that was an amazing experience. I mean, I love St. Michael's School. I think that uh, some of the, I think the person that I am is definitely um, it goes back to St. Michael's, you know, teaching uh, the importance of service and helping other people. And here I am, helping a lot of people or trying to. Anyway. I have to say, I feel extremely fortunate to live in a neighborhood where public services are accessible, they're visible, they're nearby. I live right on Roosevelt and Union. I am <coughs> across the street from a fire station, half a block away from the police department. Um, within two blocks of the library. I really appreciate, at least from where I live, the accessibility of these public services. The most memorable moment for me in Flushing was actually coming to this country and establishing, my family establishing itself. Like, I don't know if you guys are immigrants, but it is just such an experience when you land in a different country and you realize that this is where you're gonna live and this is gonna be your home, and I just, when you're in the Dominican Republic or in a different country, you kind of dream of what New York City would be like. 
And it was just a surreal moment to walk the streets of Flushing as a seven-year-old girl thinking to myself, wow, this is where I'm going to live. I used to dream about it when I was very little. Um, I also think the memories of the, um, the Chinese New Year parades is always something that's kind of a signature in Flushing that's really fun. Um, this was the year that, it was the first year that I marched actually in my life. It was the second year, but the first year, uh, but the second year that I am marched as an organization. So that was really special and a lot of fun. So I am is um, an organization that I decided to start when I was 25. I'm not going to say I am. But really, the inspiration behind I am was my immigrant experience and when I say my really myself and that of the founders which are two of my sisters and a friend um, I grew up seeing some really difficult parts of my parents lives so my parents came here obviously they didn't know the language um, at a certain point they were undocumented my dad held you know really uh, what people would label as menial jobs so working in um, in meat packing factories and things like that and even though as a child you don't really understand realities of life you definitely internalize the emotions of your parents um, and so you know I've seen my parents struggle and I've seen them go through some really tough experiences and you know I think that once I started to grow up um, I began to realize that you know being a good person in the world and doing the thing you love for me wasn't enough, even though my parent's dream was always to just follow your dreams. And, and I realized that my dream was really not so much about myself, but really about helping make the lives of other people easier. And so I Am is an organization that uh, works to empower immigrants. Um, the main service that we have is English language programs. I feel like language is not only important because of economic mobility, but it's it's a force, you know, it's a force. It's what you use to communicate. And living in such a diverse community, you know, you realize that the reason why you don't speak to your neighbors is because they don't understand you, maybe, or you don't understand them. And so to be able to give someone the tool to communicate is a powerful, uh, it's a powerful thing to just think about. And I think for those of us that speak English or speak another language, we take it for granted and we don't realize how life-changing that can be to learn about somebody else, to be able to communicate, um, to be able to do well in your job just because you're able to communicate to other people. Um, and so we work uh, by offering English language services. We also do um, workshops that um, try to encourage immigrants to engage with government agencies and other nonprofits that have services that can benefit from them. So we worked with um, HRA, the Human Resources, administration of New York City, we've worked with um, the Mayor's Office for Immigrant Affairs, uh, we've worked with most of the organizations out there trying to uh, serve immigrants. And, you know, we continue to work with other organizations um, to help bring the community together, um, not working alone, but trying to work with, with everyone in the community. And we've been in Flushing for about five years. Um, and we, in the past, we've served a, a predominantly Latino population, um, and I think that that speaks to the barriers, the cultural barriers that exist. I think that, you know, when the head of an organization looks different from you, you're more reluctant to um, ask for help of that person because you feel like they might not understand you. So I think that by nature of the fact that I am Latina, we attract a lot of um, Latinos. Um, but we've increased the percentage of um, of Asian constituents, so at this point we're about, I think we, we've raised our percentage to 23% Asian, and we've tried to bring on staff members that uh, speak Korean and Mandarin. So it's a work in progress, I think, um, but you know, we try to serve everyone. It's always a challenge with resources and trying to find people that um, speak the language and can work with us in that way. You know what's funny? So I got like that in my apartment yesterday and the super was sleeping. So I was literally standing in my building uh, for about an hour and a half, which is a really long time. And I was watching people come in. And it's amazing. I mean, just, just my neighbors have changed. The demographics of the building have, have changed. 
because of the recession and because housing has become less affordable in certain areas, Flushing, you know, I believe is significantly affordable in comparison to other places. So now you have an influx of young professionals moving into Flushing. Um, so 10 years from now, it's hard to predict because we don't know what the economy is going to bring. But Flushing continues to, um, to change in ways that I could never imagine. Um, but just even just sitting there and observing the people that were coming into my building, I was just like, wow, this was definitely not the case three years ago or the case five years ago or 10 years ago. So even within the last three years, it's, it's changed so much in my opinion.